This building may not be very familiar to you, but I'm sure that the magazines we make inside are. This is the home of Future Publishing, Europe's biggest publisher of computers magazines. My name's Steve Jarrett, and I'm the editor of one of those magazines, perhaps the best known of all, Amiga Format. Before we get down to business, perhaps you'd like to take a look inside. These are the offices of the biggest, best, and most famous Amiga magazine, Amiga Format. And here are a few of the people that worked long and hard to bring you the most read Amiga magazine on the newsstands. Behind me is Sue White, Amiga Format's art editor. She's responsible for making sure the magazine looks as good as it does. This is Richard Jones. He's our production editor. He reads everything we write, takes out all the spelling mistakes, and makes sure it's fit to print. And this is Nick Veach, consultant editor and Amiga Format's resident technical expert. Anyway, let's leave them to get on with their work. Let's go to my desk. The Amiga has long been recognized as the best home computer for the video enthusiast. With its range of software and hardware, and the graphics capabilities of the machine itself, many professional sequences have been created with the aid of the world's favorite home computer. This video shows you how you can start out in the exciting arena of DTV with little more than an Amiga and a video recorder. Now, over to our video expert. I hope you find this tutorial useful and interesting. Hello there and welcome to the rather surreal idea of a video about video. As soon as we get started properly, we'll be showing you how you can do things with an Amiga that make your home videos look pretty much like the programs on TV. Incidentally, before we start, I just should mention that the picture quality here isn't quite what we normally bring you, because the whole thing's running through this 150 pound Amiga Genlock, but we think you'll agree it's not too bad. What this Genlock allows us to do is add titles at the start of a video to introduce it, add credits at the end to give mention to anyone who's helped out, and even put captions on any picture you want them to. All this will be no problem at all for you to do with just an Amiga and a simple video setup, and you might also want to try in hand at something rather more complicated, like special effects or animation. That's better. One little problem we might need to deal with before we start off, though, is that you might not have a very clear idea of what the phrase desktop video actually means. To be honest, that's because it doesn't really mean an awful lot. When the phrase desktop publishing started getting popular to describe using a computer to design magazines, people started calling any video process that involved a computer desktop video. The difference is that with desktop publishing, you can completely do away with all the traditional processes. Instead, typesetting and laying out your magazine, complete with pictures, entirely on the screen. Desktop video, on the other hand, is not radically different from video without computers. The main processes are still shooting your footage and then editing it. You might be aware that Hollywood filmmakers actually cut out the bits of film they want and glue them together, leaving the unwanted pieces lying on the cutting room floor. But editing video is rather different. The only way to edit videotape is to play your footage on one video recorder or even your camcorder, which is called your source, and record just the bits you want onto a second video recorder, which holds your master tape. A computer isn't really a big help in a process as simple as that, and video editing is pretty much a computer-free zone, though I have to admit that's not quite the whole truth. The video industry is now switching in a big way to digital editing systems run entirely on computers, where the video footage is digitized into the computer and stored on a massive hard drive. Using the editing software, the operator can then simply drag clips of footage into the sequence wherever he wants them, and mess with the audio, then dump the whole finished sequence to the master tape. That sort of thing is currently rather too advanced for the Amiga, but there is actually a way you can give your Amiga a role in the editing process. Let's just explain a bit about how home editing works. The simplest way to edit is set your recording machine on pause, then play the piece you want on your source machine, and just start and stop recording to get the piece you want. That's really all editing is, just choosing the bits of footage you want and recording them. But doing it this way is a bit rough and ready, so it's called crash editing. You'll tend to get gaps each time you start and stop recording, so there is a better way. You can easily pop down to a specialist shop like Techno and buy an editing machine like this one. These range in price hugely, from just over £100 to around 1000 Editing mixers will enable you to add fades from one shot to another, and also to dub sound, 
and even add special effects like whizzing pictures around the screen. But probably the most important thing you want to look for in an editing mixer is the ability to actually control your camcorder and video recorder when they're playing back or recording. To control the VCR or camcorder though, the edit machine has to be able to talk to the video players. So one thing you should bear in mind when you're choosing new equipment is connectability. For example, lots of Sony equipment uses a connection system called LANC, spelt L-A-N-C, which makes them very easy to connect up. And other manufacturers have adopted the same system. Panasonic use their own connection system, and so on. The advantage of having an edit mix that starts and stops both playback and recording is that the edits will be much less noticeable. You may know that television pictures run at 25 frames per second. That's 25 different pictures every second. A good edit controller will mean that your edits only take about three frames to complete, which is not totally perfect, but is not so noticeable as to be intrusive. To get any better, you'd have to be using professional broadcast quality equipment. You can also buy an Amiga package called Video Director, which does the same as an edit machine. It includes hardware to control the LANC equipped player and has a programmable infrared remote control that can operate your recording VCR. And it also has software to help you edit a program easily. It's pretty good, it gives decent results and it only costs about £80. Anyway, the point we were making before we digressed was that the main processes in video production are shooting the footage and editing it and that desktop video doesn't really help with either. What the computer can do, however, is replace a whole lot of extra gadgetry. To do titles like this, at one time you would have had to buy a dedicated video captions generator, which would have been pretty expensive and yet not half as flexible as a computer, where control over style of lettering and colour is almost unlimited. You could also use graphics programs on a computer to create logos or intro animations, or a sequencer to compose music for your programs. And that's before you even start considering any video special effects you could do with a computer. So while it's not a key part of the video system, a computer can play a major role in video. More than that though, desktop video is about simplicity. The essence of DTV is DIY, you might say. That's because all you need for a basic desktop video setup is stuff you've probably got in your home already. A camcorder with which to shoot the footage, and that also acts as your source machine when you're editing, a VCR to record when you're editing, and an Amiga with software. There's only one extra bit of gadgetry that you won't already have, and that's this thing, a Genlock, which is used to mix together your Amiga's video output and the signal from your videotape. But we'll explain all about Genlocks shortly. <laughs>